Okay, then let us go to the book of Romans chapter 8. And let us read from verse 31. Verse 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who didn't spare his son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with his also, with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. And then verse 35 said, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness, or peril, or sword. 37 says, Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death or no life, no angels, no principalities, no powers, no things present, no things to come, no heights, no depth, no any other created thing, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this wonderful word in the mighty precious name of Jesus. Relate it to us and explain it to us according to your plan in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have placed or I have written a heading we are more than the conquerors. What we have just read, we are hearing Paul writing to the Romans, explaining to them. In the first verse that we have read, the Bible says, if God is for us, who can be against us? If God is standing, us, who can st is standing with us, who can stand against us? If God is the one who is agreeing to what we are doing, who can say we must not do what we are doing? So now what I want to speak with you a little bit today is that we are more than the conquerors. What is the explanation of we are more than the conquerors? We are called, we have conquered, or we are more than the conquerors when we are able to escape or when we are able to fight, and, or when we are able to reach a stage when we can say we have found a settlement for a problem that we were having. Hallelujah. When we say you are more than the conqueror, we mean that you are above people who have been called they are victorious or they've got things that they are doing and they make it in what they are doing. We are victorious because Christ Jesus has made us to be victorious. Hallelujah. Now the Bible says in that verse that we just read, it says to us, if God is for us, what we, when we, can we say about all these things that are happening? What then can we say about the problems that we have as children of God? What then can we say about the diseases that we are having as children of God? Our joblessness, our lack of finances, our everything that is happening around us. What can we say then about all these things? And then the Bible explained them to us and say, there is nothing we can say about the things that are happening around us. The only thing we can say is, if God is for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. Now, I want to say unto you, as children of God, there are a lot of things that are happening in our day in and day out lives. In our day to day lives, we meet challenges. In our day to day lives, we meet things along the road that make us sometimes not to enjoy the life that we say we are enjoying in the Lord. In our day-to-day -day lives, there are things that we come across in life 
that made us to stand still where we are supposed to go forward, that made us to have delays where we were supposed to be going forward and having what we are supposed to have. Now the Bible explains to us and say, in all these things, the only thing that we can say is, if God is for us, who can be against us? This word or this standard or this line explains to us that if we've got somebody that is standing with us as children of God, we can never be called that we are defeated because we have got somebody that is beside us who's always encouraging us to be or to do what God wants us to do in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, if Mudimu, if God is the one who's walking with us, children of God, remember, the Bible says those verses, some of the verses that I've jumped, they said, he gave his only son. Now, if he has given us his only begotten son, how can he not give unto us freely that which we are asking of him? Why? Because when he gave his son, it is not because we've asked for a son. When we gave his only begotten son, it is not because we prayed and Lord and say, Father, we want your son to come and die for us. No, no. When he gave his only begotten son, it was his own will, the will of the Father, to send Jesus to come and die for us. Remember, the Bible says he is the firstborn of our salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, because Jesus has came, the Bible is saying, can God not freely do unto us that which we wish him to do unto us? Why? Because he has given us his only begotten son. Now, when Jesus came here on earth, he came to conquer the works of sin. He came to conquer the works of the devil. He came to conquer earthly desires. He came to conquer things that will make our Christianity not to be the real Christianity. He came to conquer that which will make you to be disappointed, that which will make you to go back, that which will make you to sit back, that which will make you to be discouraged in the way of the Lord, that which that will make you maybe sometimes to say, I am no longer going to the house of the Lord because of one, two, three. Now when Jesus came here, he was here because he wanted to shame all the worldly things that will attract us and make us to go out of the way of God so that we won't live according to the will of the Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? Now the Bible says, If God is for us, if God is working with us, and if God is the one who sent Christ to come and die for our sin, how then can he not give us freely that which he has written in his word that he is going to grant it unto us if we can ask of him to give it unto us? Hallelujah. In our day-to-day -day life, there are things that we are crying for. There are things that we are crying and praying that God, if you might do this unto me, I will be, I will do. But now the Bible is saying God is readily or is ready to give us that which we are searching for because he is the one that started this journey of Christianity through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the book of Pisalem, chapter 118, verse 6 and 7, the Bible says, The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can men do to me? The Lord is for me among those who help me. That's Pisalem 118, verse 6 and 7. The Bible says, The Lord is on my side always. When you have dedicated your life unto Christ, when you have given your life unto Christ, he is there for you each and every day. Wherever you go, wherever, in whatever you want to do, God is there on your side or beside you so that he can help you in whatever that you are coming across in life. Can somebody say hallelujah? 
Now, because God is the one who started this road that we are in today, the word of the Lord is also uh, again telling us so that we may stand again in our faith and say, He is right beside us each and every day. That makes us to be able to conquer the situations that we are meeting each and every day. That makes us to be able to conquer the challenges that we are meeting each and every day. Why? Because he is always closer to us. Now when God is closer to you, whatever that you are meeting along the road, you need only as a Christian to utter a simple word. A simple word by, a mouth, by your mouth. If God is for me, who can be against me? In other words, it means this which that I'm coming across along the road, this which that I'm coming across in my daily life, God that I'm working with, He's right here beside me now. Now if he's here closer to me, it means that challenge that you are having, he knows about it. If the Lord is closer to you, it means the lack that you are having today, he knows about it. If God is closer to you, it means that joblessness of yours, God knows about it. In Psalm 118, there is a line that I love there in verse 6 and 7. It says, what is it that man can do to me? In other words, even if you can discourage me, I'm undiscourageable. Even if you can try to speak back about me, you are just wasting your time. Why? Because my God is always standing beside me to see to it that I conquer each and every situation that I come across in life. Why? For the glory of his mighty name. Because he brought his son to earth so that he can come and die for us so that we can be what we are today. The Bible says we are more than the conquerors. How many times are we failing? How many times are we not reaching where we are supposed to reach? How many times are we defeated as children of God? I was reading the Bible and then I found out that when you are along the road, when you are walking your path of Christianity, doing whatever that you are supposed to do in each and every day's life, when you conquer the situation that you are in today, let me say today, maybe today you have been discouraged. Maybe today what you are thinking is not coming to pass. Maybe today you are telling yourself, but this time on, on Wednesday, when it's say four o'clock, I will be where, 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 doing this and this and this and this. Now the Bible says when you are able to conquer that which is making you not to be where, 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 where today, but this time on Wednesday, when you are able to conquer that situation, the Bible says the Lord exalts you. In other words, when you pass the test of today, God takes you to another level. Are you hearing me? That is why as Christians, we must always conquer. When you conquer, you are promoted. The promotion might be, might be little or might be big, but Oksalayo, you are promoted. In other words, we must take it into consideration to think about it all the time that as I am a Christian, living a Christian life, I'm not doing it for Mali Odinni. I'm doing it for myself that when I conquer my situation, I will be promoted. Now, it means when you are a Christian, when you fail, in that which you were supposed to do, you are demoted. You go down. Some of us here, we are failing because of what will people say. 
And when they say it, what will happen? Hmm? Some were failing to do what we are supposed to do today. Why? Because we are looking at the eyes of people. So now when they look at you, what will happen? And then you will fail. When you fail, my brother, my sister, you become demoted from where you are standing. Why? Because your faith does not grow. When you have failed in that which you were supposed to have passed, your faith diminishes, goes down. If Nehudumela, you were believing that God can do it for me, after failing that test, that legal test, you no longer believe that he can do it for you. You go back a little while and you sit back. And when you sit back and when we ask you, you said, no, mama, I just want to pray. My brother, let me tell you, encourage yourself. You must go on and stand up. Why? Because when you conquer that situation, God will exalt you. God will promote you. Don't allow the devil to let you fall down on that situation. Why? Because God has a very, very big job for you to do ahead of you. Now, when you fail this little test, when you become demoted, You have to restructure your walking and restructure your stand again. Let me try to explain what I'm trying to say. When we are Christians, being in the house of the Lord, and a test comes to us, comes to you as a child of God, when that test comes to you, you fight and fight and fight and fight and fight. After fighting for three months, fighting the same test, writing the same examination, and you are not passing. Because you are failing, you are not passing, you are trying, you are not passing, you let go. And you say, I cannot do it again, I cannot do it anymore. And when you let go and say, I cannot do it anymore, let me rest a little bit. My brother, you are going to stage number zero. That's why I say you have to restructure again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you, you are more than the conqueror. For you to be able to be taken up or to be promoted, you must be able to conquer that situation that you are in. For you to be able to promote a child of God, you must be able to conquer the talkings of people. I want us today to go and pray and pray for ourselves and say, Lord, I want to be a conqueror each and every day. Since I became a Christian, I've been in this level for three years. Don't blame me. Don't blame your pastor. Don't blame your apostle. Don't blame the prophet. The problem is you because you are not passing your examination. Hey, we are preaching the gospel now. We are telling you that God is good. But when even if you are told that God is good, you are not able to go and walk in his goodness. You always fail in your examinations. I will call it that way. When a temptation comes, you fail your examination. When you fail your examination, you stay in the same class. And now because you are not passing, that little, little, small, small, small test of grade three. You become professor of grade three. When I say you become professor of grade three, you know everyone who goes in grade three and leaves grade three. Why don't you stand up 
put out the dust in your clothes and your legs and say, today I want to do a new thing. If it needs me to pray all night long, I'm going to start to do it today. If it needs me to fast for three days, I'm going to do it. It's long. I've been staying in grade three. I want to go to grade four and experience what others are experiencing. The Bible says we are more than the conquerors. God is beside us. Why are we failing? The psalmist said, in all those that help us, that help me, God is among those that help. In other words, he is ready to do something in your life. God is ready to wipe your tears away today. God is ready to take you from A to B, from B to C, C to D, until you reach Z, if you have to. He is very much ready. For us to always fail, and for us to stay in the same level, it was never a plan of God. For us to stay in charis for three good years and there is no promotion, no going forward, no going back, nothing and nothing at all. It was never God's plan. The Bible says God's plan is for us to have a better future. Huh? A better tomorrow. Let me start you. Can you ask the person that is close to you, what is it that you can tell us about your better tomorrow? I'm blessed with all spiritual blessings. In hey, it's true. Why does it not happen to you? I'm not saying we must not uh, speak verses, isn't it? You're understanding me, Anger? I'm just saying, if you are saying, I'm blessed with all spiritual <laughs> blessing in the heavenly. Let us see by you first. Now you are our example now. So that we can be able to follow you now. If you can come and tell us now and say, my Jesus can save you. We must see that salvation in you. And when you say, my God can heal you, we must see that healing in you. When you say, my God can deliver you, we must see that deliverance in you. And when we see it, Renata Tomo Kopisha, Rakuku Naratabushura Tarabushuri, Tell us, what is it that you have done when you meet with this and this and this? And you tell us, you know what? I was praying each and every day because I believed God can change it. And when I was playing, God changed my situation. And when I leave, I go and said, he told me that he was praying every day. Let me also start praying every day and see if I won't be able to conquer this situation that I am in today. Now, most of us, we are failing. Why? We don't know the strategy of conquering the temptation, of conquering the examination that we are in right now. That is why we tend to fail. Now, when you have that word inside of you, when that problem comes, when sickness comes, you stand up in faith and say, devil, you don't know. It's like you've forgotten that somebody who died at Calvary and by his stripes, I am healed. You cannot stay in me another minute again. You have to go. You find it in the word now. Now, when you are not getting a job, I'm teaching you how to pass your test. When that job is not coming, you stand up and say, devil, you want to discourage me. Why? Because I know the thoughts that God has for me. The thoughts of good success, future, bright future, not these that I'm encountering today. I know one day is one day. You will be ashamed. 
When you meet temptations, for you to be able to conquer, you must have a word in you that will make you to conquer. When you are being troubled by evil spirits, you must have a word that you will be able to stand against the spirit of the devil. I love to speak this verse. No weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. Nothing. The Bible says so. Even if today I'm sick, today I cannot stand, today this and this is happened to but no weapon will ever prosper in me. Because I am a child of God now. Why can this thing happen to us? Now all these things, Manaba Baba, are happening to us and we are unable to conquer and reach our destination because we don't recognize that God has given us the authority to be more than the conquerors in Christ Jesus. Now when we are more than the conquerors, there is no situation that will be able to stand before us. When we are more than the conquerors, there is nobody that can come and talk things to you that will make you go down and go back and relax. Why now you know God is beside you? You know that the life that I'm living here, I'm living for Christ. It is no longer me that liveth, but Christ liveth in me. The things that I want to do, I do not, but I do those that Christ wants me to do. It means along the road, wherever I'm going, I'm more than the conqueror. Because when I am conquered, I am more than the conqueror. Verse 35 said, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Now let me say these questions to you. Why now do you allow situation to separate you from the love of Christ? Why now do you allow your boyfriend to separate you from the love of Christ? Why do you allow your girlfriend to separate you from the love of Christ? Why do you allow your friend to separate you from the love of Christ? All the things that happen here on earth, the challenges that we meet each and every day in our lives, they are there to separate us from the love of Christ. And the Bible says there is no one that can separate us. We just have to know the secret. So that we cannot be separated with the love of Christ. We must know the secret. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay then. Mola verse 18. Before, I didn't read this one. It says, I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed. I consider no one can separate me because I know that the glory that shall be revealed in me shall knock down my enemy, shall knock down those who are talking about me, shall knock down my adversaries, shall knock down those that don't believe in my God, shall knock down all those that does not believe in whatever that I'm doing now. Who can separate you from the love of God? Hallelujah. The only thing that you are lacking, Banababo Mashi, the right attitude towards the problem that we are having. If why do you go and tell Makelwana that I don't have food? You are making Makelwana to laugh at you now. Why don't you sit in your house and say, oh, well, because food is not there, maybe it's my opportunity of praying. Let me read my Bible and pray. If food is not coming, food is not coming. Believe that God will send somebody to your rescue. Now, if you 
feel if you are staying in your house or where you stay in your home there is this urge always of telling you go out go out go out now if you don't want to go out tell yourself if i feel this urge of saying go out is better for me when i go out or go to the house of the lord because when you go out now you find yourself having failing in your own assignments uti tola udia di ntoche no sadi na hane ene kamo bible ile ai bolela yari we are more than the conquerors in christ refiti shaba ba shutseng why is ono ngrina re palelwa ka bophilo why is it so difficult for us to make that decision for you it is so difficult You've been in this relationship with this lady for 200 years now. But to make a decision of saying now I want to marry is so difficult. For you to do a right decision is very difficult. So now for you to be able to do the right decision, have the right mindset of having the word of God in you. Because when you have the word of God, your path of victory is assured. Those challenges that we are meeting each and every day, it has been assigned and said a long time ago before Jesus came here that when he comes, he is going to shame the works of evil and the works of the devil. And after shaming them all, it means we are going to walk freely when we accept and believe in him. And then when we accept and believe in him, we are called that we are children of the Father in heaven. When we are children of the father in heaven it means then we are more than the conquerors through him who died for us in verse 34 where we have read we jumped it when we read but there is a line there that says Christ is always interceding on our behalf Can you tell the person that is close to Christ is interceding for you? Udu sikole go dimong seated at the right hand of God interceding for you so that you can pass. For you so that you can conquer. For you so that you can reach your destiny. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you Christ is interceding for me? I can never fail. In verse 26 the Bible says, "Likewise the spirit helps in our weakness." Number 1 rna likrest interceding on our behalf. Number 2 we have the Holy Spirit that helps us in our weakness. When you feel you are weak, the Holy Spirit is there to give you strength. When you think you cannot make it, the Holy Spirit is there to make sure that you make it. When you think you are going to fail, the Holy Spirit is there to make sure that you don't fail. When you think people have rejected you, the Holy Spirit is there to assure to you, you are a child of the most high God. Even though they are rejecting you, the heavens are not rejecting you. When you feel nobody cares about you, the Holy Spirit is there to assure to you, even though your brothers, your sisters don't care about you, heavens care about you. We have the Holy Spirit to strengthen us so that we don't fail. If you feel like failing, you go back, you go to him. Holy Spirit help me. I don't have the power. I don't have the strength. But I have to make it today. I have to have my breakthrough today. Spirit of my father help me. And the Holy Spirit will be there to help you. Why because he is there to help you in your weakness. Where you are weak. The Bible says let the weak in the Lord say I'm strong. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. If you are weak in the Lord Say I'm strong. 
the spirit of the father will help me i will go through this situation if you feel you are rejected today and the rejection is making you to be distressed and you feel like you can leave this god that you are serving let me tell you there is the holy spirit to help you so that you can conquer in the way that you are working can somebody say hallelujah hallelujah now the bible says in verse 14 15 it says for as many as are led by the spirit of god these are sons of god for we did not receive a spirit of bondage again to fear we received a spirit of adoption by whom we cry abba father when we accept the spirit of the lord we become freeborn and when we are freeborn we don't live by fear and when we don't live by fear we will live victorious lives when you have fear fear brings doubt when doubt is there in you doubt brings shame when doubt is there failure must follow because god has a good thought for you god wants you to have a good thing but when you reach there because you are doubting thomas when you reach there, you don't even know which one to take. Your heart is saying, take this one. But when you look at your own self, you say, mm -mm, this one cannot be good for me. This one is good for Mamruti. Let me take this one. There is this thing we love to say. My children know. When you come to me and say, Mama, I'm asking for, and I'll ask you what? anything i will tell them i don't have anything i'm sorry there is no enwelyengwe hallelujah so enwelyengwe anything is a child of doubt if i can reach here now to my father and say father i want this and this and this and my father does not agree what is it that i'm going to say no then let me not say father i want this let me reach there and say father i want this no but this one even if i can go there i say father i want this if father can say no what is it that i'm going to say go there and say father i want a beautiful wife i don't want an ugly one hmm? father i want a handsome husband now i don't want an ugly one even if I'm ugly, but I want to have someone. I'm just giving examples. Hallelujah. Father. Father, I want a husband who's called. I'm not saying it's bad. Though. Are you going to be able to handle it? So now when you go to the father, you must know what you are searching for. And don't allow the devil to put doubt into your heart. Because the minute doubt creeps in, you have failed already. You will never get what you want. You will get the second best or the last best. Why? Because you were not sure of what you are searching for. Now, if you are sure of what you are searching for, number one, you know, Lord, the God of Israel is beside me always. Number two, you know that Christ is interceding for you day in and day out. Number three, you know that you have been given a spirit, not of fear, a spirit that you will be able to go and say, Abba, Father. It means now when you stand, when you want to do your thing, you stand firm, you stand knowing the word, and when you go to the Father, you say, Father, I'm not able to pass here. Can you please do something for me? I want to pass. And the Father will give you the grace. Some of us here, we are where we are today, not because we know, because of the grace of the Father. The grace of the Lord is so abundant.
that whenever you go with to him sincerely, he will give you or grant you whatever that you are crying for. Why? Because he is the reason of saving us. Hmm? The reason when he said that Jesus to save us was to make a nation, create a nation of people who can conquer each and every day. Remember when the children of Israel were coming out of Egypt, he told them and said, every ground that you shall step upon it, I'm giving it to you. Huh? So now, so that they can be defeated. When they go to other nations, when they look at them, they say, mm -mm, we cannot go and fight with those ones. Oh Lord, no. No. Those people are mighty, they are giants. Eh? Children of Anak, they are so big. We cannot conquer them. But God has given them a promise, when you step, I give. Hallelujah. So I want to prophesy over somebody's life today. If you have that problem, that is disturbing you not to reach where you are supposed to reach. Let me tell you something today. If you can go and tell God, God is going to give you a word that says, whatever that you're going to say today, it is going to happen to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Do you believe in what I'm saying? Can you tell the person that is close to you, whatever that I'm going to say today, it's going to happen to me today in the mighty name of Jesus. If it were not so, the Bible says, when you step on the land, because you are a Christian, you are, a, you are an Israelite, that land belongs to you. Moshe, every land that you shall step upon, I will give to you. The Bible said, they didn't go by the road that will go through and they reached quickly in seven days. They went around. Took 400 years for them to reach with the promised land. Huh? Do you know why? God wanted to step into as many countries as they can so that they can take over the countries. So that when they reach Canaan, they will be having prayer breakthrough and everything and everything that they need in their possession. So now this is what I want to say. Now God, when now we are born, you can see you are taking a long road of reaching where you are supposed to go. Now you are crying, hey, hey, delay. Hey, hey, my dear. Let me tell you, God is allowing that delay so that you can step in each and every country, walk past each and every uh, company, walk past each and every place, so that when you reach your own place, you will be having all the blessings that you need. Remember, as you are walking, even your upstairs is growing. As you are walking, even your faith is growing. As you are walking, even your wisdom is growing. Your understanding is growing. The more you stay there praying and shouting and screaming and saying, God, can you come to my rescue? Father, can you come and rescue me? Your faith is being lifted. Your trust in the Lord is being lifted. You believe in God more than yesterday. You trust in him more than yesterday. Why? Because what is happening in you is this. When you pray and pray and pray, you are being overhauled in the spiritual. You are being taken up in the spiritual. God is taking you from A to B. Even even though you are not seeing where you are going but the truth is let me tell you when you are praying when people are laughing at you you are being taken from a to b from b to c from c to d from d to e from e until z why because you have to move around for 400 years because why where you are going it's a pro misland So now, if you want to reach the promised land by one day, you are in trouble. Ah, uh, you have to walk now. You have to walk. When you reach some place, you find there is a sea. And when there is a sea, oh God, what is it that I have to do? Because by then Christ hasn't yet come. They have to go to Moses, the leader. 
Mushe, what is it that we have to do? And Mushe went to the father and said, Father, see, in front, I love this God. When I think of the goodness of Christ, oh my God. You know, God said what? Allow them to sit there. Allow them to sit as I'm talking to you. And God was talking to Moses. When you go down, Moshe, this is what you have to say. You call the Levites. They enter. You do this and do this. You point by your whatever, your, 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 your rod. And you will see things happening. Now allow them to stay and sit there. And when they were sitting there, God was waiting for this. For the East, uh, Egyptians to come closer. And closer. And closer. And closer. And closer. Until one of them say, look at the dust over there. The Egyptians are coming. What am I going to do, Father? Look at the dust of my enemy. My enemy is coming closer. What is it that I want to do? What is it that I'm going to do, my father? And the father will ask you, will answer you and say, my son, my daughter, this enemy that you are seeing today, you'll never see him again in your entire life. And the Bible say they stayed. The dust was over everywhere. People, was, people were talking. People were saying whatever they can say. And then God said to Moses, Moses, it's time. Get up and tell the children of Israel, it is time to cross over. Others were murmuring and asking, how are we going to cross over? When he reaches there, he just pointed. Papa said I must point. And he pointed. And the Bible says the waters went asunder and opened a highway, a freeway, whatever. It's like I'm seeing them, you know. And then when they enter all of them, the Bible says even the Egyptians were able to do what? To enter. This is what I want to tell you. I'm finishing. For you to conquer that situation, God has allowed it to reach its highest stage so that you can see by your own eyes the falling of your enemy, the falling of your devil, the following of Satan, the following of everything that stands in your way so that you can be able to do what God wants you to do. And the Bible says, when the, the Israelite, the last one, jumped to the overside and all the Egyptians by then they were inside <laughs> hey, I love my God you don't know all of them were inside Packard and they said these ones were walking on they were walking on food and this one, those ones were coming by chariots and horses and what what so it means those ones were faster than them so it means your enemy must be, might be running faster than you but don't mind what he or she is doing let me tell you what god will do to you today when you move out of this temptation this problem this heartache this disease this shame that you are in every day you will never see your enemy again Never. The Bible says, as the enemies were running, that's why they hold them. They must not go to the other side. Maybe they were just a kilometer. They were inside of them. My God, my God was waiting for all of them to enter. They entered all of them. And when they've entered all of them, God said, Moshe, number two, do what I told you to do. You don't speak. And the Bible says, when Moses did what God has told him, 
the waters came back and swallowed all of them. Hallelujah. So I want to ask you a question. You are crying about your enemy. You are crying about your delay. Delay is good for you now. So that you will be able to take everything that belongs to you before you reach where you are going. Mm? It's good now for your enemy to follow you to church. So that he can see when God takes you to the other side now. Eh? It's good for them now to follow you each and every day when you sleep now. They come to your sleep now and they press you down and they do all that. What I know is God will never allow them to triumph over you. When God has done it for you, every nation must be afraid. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you tell the person that is close to you, you are more than a conqueror. The conqueror in you must emerge today. The conqueror in you must be visible today. The con conqueror in you must rise today. The conqueror in you must be visible today. The conqueror in you must speak today. The conqueror in you must talk for you today. The conqueror in you must rise today. Hallelujah! Can you tell the person that is close to you there is a conqueror in me?